Welcome back to DreamHack Winter. It's the Grand Prix. We had the first game of the day. We just saw you need taking the match against Ness. It was a very enjoyable match, but now we'll be jumping to the next one. And with me will be Life Coach, first time today, and again, Lorinda. Life Coach, you actually play a lot with JJ. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, we basically practice together every day or six days a week, uh, very long hours. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very familiar with this uh, matchup or with the lineup that JJ brought to this tournament and I'm really, really looking forward to see him in, in action. Okay, let's let's pick your brain out a little bit. So what do you think? What, uh, did you talk with um, with JJ before this match? Prepa you prepared him somehow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Can you absolutely. tell us something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we definitely talked about the band strategy and what we should ban. So standard ban in our lineup is the Shaman. But um, yesterday, for um, JJ, for example, banned the Zoo because we saw some very weird cards in the Shaman. Um, so we decided uh, to leave it open and to ban Zoo. Okay, interesting. Well, the Zoo is sweeping people, basically. Yeah. The entire weekend seems to be the... The main story of, of the of the tournament, Zoo is, is being perceived as one of the best decks, maybe even better than Shaman currently, but at the same time, Shaman is good against Zoo. Yeah. So, you know. Lorinda, what do you have to say? No, just going to say, like, in a, in a non, this is basically a non-Shaman format, so Zoo <laughs> yep. thrives in that format. <laughs> Druid is probably the best pure deck that's left after Shaman, but Zoo beats it, and so Zoo is really thriving in this tournament. And we've seen several 3 zeros, and we've seen Zoo being really key, especially those mirrors. Wait, did you say, Life Coach, that you wanted to... Um, JJ will leave the Shaman open? Um, no, I said yesterday he left it open. Oh, okay. But this time we discussed that this uh, Shaman of Vegus is not looking very weird, so we obviously banned ah, the Shaman. I see, I see. Okay, so j both players have their Shamans banned. No surprise there. JJ, with the lineup that is actually a usual lineup right now, Druid, Warlock and Warrior. What kind of Warrior is he playing? Yeah, uh, the Dragon Warrior. We are very yeah. convinced that the Dragon Warrior is a very big powerhouse and we are also playing that with double first mates and with uh, Ravaging Ghouls um, just because we think that this very, very much heavily punishes Zoo. So the idea is also to go um, counter pick the Zoo into the Warrior. That's interesting because... Uh, uh, the, the Warrior into the Zoo, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's very interesting to see that uh, some time ago on ladder, Dragon Warrior wasn't really that great against Zoo, right? Oh. Um, yeah, well, it depends on the build, right? Now, exactly, exactly. Now with the double ghouls, that actually kind of changes the, the um, let's say, the chances of the Dragon Warrior. So it's an interesting choice. Uh, I don't think actually many players did bring the Dragon Warrior to this tournament. Most people are sticking to the cartoon, sticking to the Zoff, but Dragon Warrior seems to be like the deck of the past that make, is making a blast right now. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think that might be, I mean, exactly what you were describing. So it's uh, very, very heavily depending on the build. And if you play with double executes and with all these late game drops, these 8 drops, 9 drops, 10 drops, yes, then that might be true that you're a little bit unfavored against Zoo. But if you just replace all the big drops and the executes with early drops, early game, Nizot first mates, then it becomes quite heavily favored, like 5% favored, 10% favored. <laughs> heavily favored 5%? No, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> it's uh, it's kind of... Interesting to see that um, current current metagame of Hearthstone, when you have an advantage, it's only like a few percent, mm -hmm. right? Like it's not like in the past, like last year, let's say, right? Yeah, when you could right. have skew the chances of each deck by making some tech choices and like take even 15, 20 percent of a single lineup, right? Uh, sorry, single matchup. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, uh, what we can tell about Vegas? Learned that. Uh, Vegas, I didn't see much of yesterday because mm -hmm. the, the place where we can view it was actually closed here. Yeah. But uh, he's the he's a local boy, at least from the right country, and he is pretty good at this game. He's a guy we see around a lot. There's there's players that you see around who haven't done that much, and he's one of those guys, I think. Isn't uh, it, didn't he play versus Stan Sivka in the Swiss yes. on stream? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, he did, did, right? Yeah, that was a. Um, I think like. The one thing I really like about those tournaments is that in even in the top eight, you will have a portion of very known yep. players and some dark horses, yep. right? And we have two of those, Maddie and Vigas. Vigas yep. are, are those two players that are here to upset uh, the players. But now uh, let's see what will the game be. And it's first Warrior from Vigas versus Super JJ Zoo. So guys, have fun and take it away. See yeah, you thank you very much, Lothar. Okay, so looks like instantly JJ is going to be up against this warrior deck. Obviously not what he would want with Zoo, but you probably have to play it at some point. 
Yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. I mean, um, Vegus Warrior, not especially a counter zoo deck, so I think that's kind of a coin flip and it really will depend on the player skills and also, of course, of which cards they get. Um, a little bit more than usual, you want to finish this one early. I think Vegus is playing a Sogoth in this deck. Which, which obviously I know Zoo can get through walls of taunts, but it's not desirable to get that far into this game. I think you'll be looking, JJ probably wants to get his turn, maybe half a turn quicker than normal. Mm, yeah, that's right. I mean, one thing we uh, can say about Vegus Warrior is that it's neither Cthulhu nor it is um, the Nezot Warrior version we saw earlier or uh, earlier in this tournament, but it's just a Control Warrior version like in the old days. Yeah, no Cthulhu right. and no Nezot, a uh, lot of uh, board removals and, of course, uh, Sogoth, this Lizara. Yeah, which is an interesting choice. That from time to time, we just see people play, and then it sort of drifts out again, and then it comes back again. It seems like it's a good time to play when people are playing fairly aggressively this tournament. That's right, yeah. I mean, he's not targetable, so he cannot be executed or being a dirt brother space. But on the other hand, I mean, he's like a 9 mana 5 9 four, Sure, that's a long way off when you're playing in Zoo. Exactly, especially if there are also 7 manas, 5, 10 taunts available. It looks a little bit underwhelming, but uh, sometimes it's really a big advantage that it's non-targetable. So how do you go about managing your imp in this matchup? Do you just save it until the turn where you're going to discard something? Is that like you don't want to put it on the board as a 1-3? If you can get another one, you might. Yeah, I mean, this imp is actually really, really strong because with this imp, Super JJ APM gets the opportunity to play double imp and to soul fire, and that's just so huge because not only do you deliver the damage, but you also draw an additional extra card. I mean, effectively, you draw two, but it's just yes. you draw one card in order to deal four damage, and that's quite a good deal. That seems like a really bad downside of soul fire. Draw two cards. They should put that in there. It's insane. <laughs> and. I assume that JJ, I mean, he may have to do that sooner than he wants just to activate it and cycle through his hand, but again, if you're cycling through your hand because you need to, doing it twice as fast seems pretty handy. That's right. I mean, JJ wants to delay that as, ah. as or much as possible, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the Im Gang boss. Perfect pick here. up against Warrior on turn three at the best of times, and the weapon has gone. This is actually a problem card to deal with. Yeah, it's pretty good. Also, uh, I also wouldn't be surprised if Vegas would play the Echo Light of Pain here, and then JJ just has this perfect turn with a double imp into the Soul Fire. So, yeah, really looking forward to uh, the action. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how many cards JJ decides to risk, whether he wants to, what he draws will decide that, of course. Uh, this is a decent pickup for Vegas. Oh, yeah, definitely. Would also not be surprised to see that being played. Mm, Solfa is also not exactly addressing this Elise Star Seeker, so also really good on board here. Uh, we can see obviously there is no Brawl. Do you just not completely ignore Brawl, but you have to kind of throw caution to the wind a little bit against Brawl these days as Zoo because you're so unfavored at times? Yeah, I think exactly what you described. So I think you can respect the Brawl to a certain extent, but you cannot completely play around that. If you do that, uh, you just give Warrior too much time to counteract. Once Warrior uh, achieves to reach turn 8, turn 9 in a comfortable fashion, you probably lose the game. Uh, I assume that JJ will choose to throw away the Argent Squire here and actually put the Villager on the board just for that little tiny bit of Brawl defense. Yeah. Um, and then we'll see if he can draw two cards. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, maybe Super GG wants to play the Soul Fire first, though, because the two minions are very equivalent mm -hmm. of what they are doing. And if Super JJ manages to pick up another Soul Fire, I mean, that would be so huge. Right. So I would really not be surprised to see him doing that, but he decides different. It's a very close call. Yeah, this is just, uh, like I say, I think this is just that little tiny brawl defense. You have a 1 1 and another minion yes. if he does brawl. So, see what we get from this. Knife Chucker, Defender, yeah, good cards, good solid cards, he will be able to deploy. Also this double imp uh, is a very, very big threat. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Vegas would have done something suboptimal to address these imp gang boss, uh, to address these imps, because the Doom God is just such an insane big threat here, threatening to draw four cards, but he can just not address it, so it doesn't matter in this case. Yeah, choosing to just be patient here, I like this play in some ways, it's nice to see someone being a bit greedy when they have to be. Uh, playing the ghoul there just didn't do much. Right, right. I mean, the defender of Argus is doing a big job here, just buffing the aiming boss to right. three uh, Just enabling it to trade into this Echo Light of Pain, only giving your opponent one additional card. And it represents an extra imp as well from the... Yeah. damage and everything. It just seems like a really good trade right now. It's just very, very good. I would also probably defender up the imp as well. 
Is so that to protect nice. the one three from weapons and such like? Or? Right, right. I mean both times. I, I meant the small limb. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, that's what that's what I thought you meant. So yeah, to protect the one three so it can't <laughs> right. be attacked. Yeah, that's right. And also everything is now out of ghoul range and revenge range. And JJ off to a terrific looking start. Yeah, I would also think that if Vegas doesn't brawl this board super, JJ just knows. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Because this this board here is to be brawled and. If this uh, board doesn't receive uh, brawl attention, then it's super clear that Vegas doesn't have it. Yeah, and like the slam as well. Everything just tells you now that you can do what you like. He's going to have to top deck to beat you. And JJ can choose to go all in if he wants to here. Oh, so JJ really only needs any kind of discard cards. I mean, there are uh, five discard cards in the deck which let Super JJ discard uh, more cards. And he just needs one of them and he will wreck Havoc. So I assume that means that what, there's only one Librarian? Um, I think there are two. Okay. There are two Librarian, one Sulfur, and two Doomguards. Oh, there. you went that way. So you finding you were finding that the um, the discard was just a little bit not interacting well with each other at times because a lot of people play six. That's why I'm asking. Um, I know Super JJ is playing six discards. Oh, he's playing but, six. Uh, that's the five already out. Yeah, sure, exactly, sure, exactly. sure. Sorry, I, I misunderstood. My bad. Okay, let's see how he t he knows there's no brawl. Will he go all in? It seems like he will. He's just making sure he takes his time. And this knife hit, oh, okay. The knife hit could have saved the 1 1, but uh, I guess Super JJ is also not that unhappy to be able to send both dudes in. Still having a very, very respectable big board. Yeah, this is plenty, especially with all that stuff still to come. And Velos really not uh, being able to draw this AoE, so that's really, really interesting. I mean, all those cards are doing something, but they are very, very slow and card draw. He can sort of slow this game down a little bit with a shield block. He may even just choose to execute to to try and keep the card advantage. Maybe he even executes the imp what? here just to stop JJ having a comeback mechanism if things do. I mean, there's always a hero power, but stop him having a second comeback mechanism if he does draw into Brawl. Yeah, that's right. But on the other hand, the execute is so valuable against the Doomguard yes. that I, I would be surprised if he would see the execute for a mere 2 2 here. So this throw will be very important, and here it is, it's so insane. This Doomguard just discarding the Silverberg Golem, putting a 3-3 into the game and throwing Jade Super JJ an additional card. I mean, this is just so much value, and he can even life tap afterwards. This is just crazy. Yeah, I wonder if he's thinking of hitting the Acolyte first, so that it doesn't get two knives into it. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I like this very much. Which one would you take? You would probably take the Defender of Argos? Or? Yeah, because it's already injured. So yep. I think I'd yep. use that again. I know he can get killed by revenge and stuff, but I, th I think i use the Defender of Argus and not, not so give... That Knife Juggler is causing a lot of problems. It's going to do three or four additional damage if it lives. Mm -hmm. Not give any chances for that Knife Juggler to get killed, I think. That's right. Or the Imping Boss, because it um, just gives you an additional 1-1 one, one as well. It so does, very but, hard to run. but then and if it gets executed, high. it kind of it takes all that value from it. It'd be interesting to see what he does. He's going to go with your play, yeah. oddly enough. I mean, I, I don't uh, I don't mind that very much, because it's it's uh, not only is it the 1-1, one, one, but it's also this additional knife, which just will also confirm an additional damage, and that might be important in this very spot. Vegas picks up the Baron Geddon, but it's too late for Baron Geddon, most likely. He may have to yeah. play it anyway, but... JJ's got too much damage, and the extra two to your own face, of course, even is the downside of the Geddon in this matchup. Okay, we can also see JJ playing around Revenge if he hits this, yeah? So, I mean, yeah. he didn't miss any attacks, but uh, it's also very important to play around these Revenge ranges. Just putting Warrior at 13. Yeah, you've got way more than 13, so there's no need to go down to 12. You've got way more than 15 as well with the armor up. Exactly, and if Vegas really decides to play this Baron Gedon, commits this Baron Gedon on the board, and I also don't see that much else, that would be definitely putting Vegas into lethal range. You know? <laughs> we are talking about uh, 10 damage plus the wolf damage, so that's definitely sufficient. I mean, it's, oh well, it, actually it's not, <laughs> but it will be sufficient, yeah? yeah. It will be sufficient because there's also Dark Peddler, and Super JJ will also have the ability to tap as well. Yeah, and he'll also have the ability just to ignore the Ged and let it do two more damage if he really, really needed that as well. Yeah. So, okay, Vegas in a world of hurt, unfortunately for him. He is just digging for that brawl and cannot pick it up. And this is huge if JJ can take this matchup down because this is one against the odds. Oh, yeah, it definitely is. And yeah, Super JJ is still having access to the entire board. I don't even know about um, the fireworks and what it should hit because Super, like Super JJ the Zoo has seven minions on the board. So by hitting a minion, you just give another board space. 
Yeah, hits the Im Gang boss just to stop the Imp from spawning. Yep. It's, it's good technique. It may matter. I don't see how it will, but always good to play correctly at all times, especially in a big tournament. Keep yourself in that right thinking frame of mind. That's right, yeah. And uh, Vegas also, um, I mean, it, the other play would have been the Iron Forge portal, but then you would have also given uh, Zoo the opportunity to trade and deploy a new minions. So, yeah, it's definitely a good thing to do. 5, 8, 10, 11. Mm, oh, and Silver Golem, so we need this crowd again. A Soulfire, for example. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what this Dark Fat will give us. <laughs> there it is. And it is a Soulfire. It's crazy. This is. Uh, it's again so so strong. Um, he also played the wolf. Okay, so he preserves the soul fire. Yeah, or is it already? No, it's not. So hmm. I mean, what he could have also opted in. So uh, Super GG opted in for the wolf to deliver two additional extra damage. But he could have also played the Marcos Imp. Maybe considering the soul fire to draw two cards. Um, While he still has the chance, because that damage is going to be done anyway, and he'll be thinking whether there's a minion he needs to hit it with, maybe? Something like that could come down, but Zogoth can't be targeted, so... That's right, that's right. In this case, the Sofa would have only given him one, one card, but yeah, I guess deploying Sofa only to draw the two cards might also be not the best use of it, so definitely don't mind this play. Yeah, still insane amounts of pressure on JJ's side. I mean, Vegas is really fighting for survival every turn, every turn. And now he's also looking at his deck and is just thinking, yeah, where are those revenges? Where are those brawls? I mean, I'm supposed to playing those in my deck, right? Yeah, I'm big favored because <laughs> of all these cards that I haven't drawn. But that's sometimes how it goes. And again, we said at the start, JJ knew to put the pressure on because yep. the quicker you put it on, the less chance those cards are in the Warrior's hand. And JJ takes a 1-0 lead against the odds and puts himself in a strong position. And as you mentioned, it was also very, very important. When this Zoo winning, I mean, we saw Zoo going 3-0 very often in this tournament. And yeah, 1-0 already confirmed. Let's see how it goes. Yep, that's the hard one of the three as well. But things can change really quickly. We just saw one go against the right. It can go the other way as well. And how is JJ's frame of mind, by the way? Because he's one of these guys who's come through every Swiss of the year, not just at DreamHack, but at other places as well. Mm -hmm. And every time he gets these top 16, something happens, he gets a yog in the face, or you know, something bad has happened to him. Uh, is he okay with that, or is he is he trying to like not let that bother him? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's super motivated, and he just sees this as uh, part of the way. I right. Mean, you will... I mean, you have to see it that way, but some players You're find that hard to deal with. Well, I mean, JJ can also be so Sure, times. right? <laughs> it's, it's not like this, but yeah. A hard trying all the time and uh, it also seems to get rewarded, so very happy for him at this very moment. Mm, okay, so let's see, we have uh, Flame him for the curve. Juggler is a consideration usually against who you want to first confirm the board control, then to play jugglers. So I wouldn't be surprised if he would dump the juggler or mulligan the juggler away. Uh, the soul fire is sometimes important to regain the board control and also sometimes has target against who, so this is also a consideration. Yeah, it's a fairly balanced hand as well. So when you've got that flame in, I think you get less greedy with the other two cards. So if you like them, you're more inclined to keep them. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't got that flame in, say that's just a abusive sergeant that's or right. something, you're more likely mm -hmm. to just not keep the juggler either and throw it all away. But when you've got that flame in now, if you can just follow it up with anything on turn two that's, that's a card, then you're in a really good spot. And he just yeah, goes with this. Okay, yeah, he is uh, exactly going with this. Um kind of mindset. The question is really whether you want to play the knife juggler on turn two, because the flaming being usually answered by two minions, uh, the flame, uh, the knife juggler is basically only at 2-2, two, two. and in Zoo you really have access to so many one and two drops that you might argue that you could have drawn a better one. But yeah. And you, you are obviously looking for those three drops in this matchup. That double M gang boss is going to be good for Vegas here. Oh, yes. Uh, be, not just because of the shape of the minion, but because of the minions it spawns. The whole matchup is about minions. Yep. So more is good. Oh, definitely agreed here. Um, but we also already see the Soulfire, which can kind of interact with the Imgang boss. So that's definitely a big one. Um, again, the Knife Juggler in this case will definitely help JJ uh, to block this Imgang boss turn as well. Right. It needs to be dealt with, but now with the councilman as well, Vegas has got a wealth of options to just start taking this board by storm. And that's uh, that's right. And um, 
But what Vegas uh, doesn't know yet is that uh, there is a soul fair in JJ Han. So in his uh, kind of thinking, the Imgeng boss is perfectly addressing the Imgeng, uh, the knife juggler, um, and even a buffed knife juggler. But the soul fair will just be devastating for these plans. So just looking at how good a second knife juggler might have been there just to set his board up. But, but you they, can't have everything, it's still pretty good. Yeah, it's very good. It's very good for JJ. Um, but there is a second Imgeng boss. So um, that will definitely do a big work, addressing this 3-2 and the 2-2 two -two knife juggler as well. Now the awkward bit start where you have this knife juggler against this imp gang boss. It's where you hope the juggler behaves himself. Well, if he hits once, that's fine. Okay, if he doesn't hit at all, that's probably also acceptable. Then you can uh, send your minions into his face. Okay, sergeant. Interesting to see here Vegas just plays the defender of Argus. Not because it's necessarily the best play as it stands, yep. but it may never get a better chance to be used. Uh, the better looking play would be something like a councilman into the Voidwalker, etc. Or even buff with the abusive, but he'll want to make a board where the defender is going to be used, so he has to think, if I don't play it now, will it ever get played? Yeah, I wouldn't mind the Darkshire Councilman and the buff here. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, I think that's better. Yeah. Um, because of uh, several reasons. So, uh, with the abusive sergeant, you buff your Darkshire Councilman to two five, and two five is addressing nearly everything on the board, at least the threatening traits. Um, right. But not only do you do this, but the defender of Argus has the ability to come down with any of those one drops in Vegas' hand, and by um, because of that, I'm pretty sure that the defender of Argus will at least see some value in this game. Um, and he agrees with you. He has just gone for this wide board, and then next turn, he has a one plus a four. He's going to get the Argus to buff something, and if none of this survives, it will be amazing. Yeah, that's right. Um, now let's see what the juggles will do because these are very, very important juggles. If those juggles just um, juggle down the one ones, I mean that's so much better than if they go face or presumably also on the Imking boss and spawning new minions. So let's see how this goes. Right, and this is interesting because the corruption is kind of useful, but the minion right away with these juggles is obviously really helpful as well. And good old Goldshire Footman's <laughs> going to see some play. Yeah, I mean, uh, the one to taunt, just just because it is a taunt is so important for him. Oh, and this is what we talked earlier about, Imgeng was being juggled, another one, one hits the board. Yeah, that's not very good for JJ. That is definitely awkward, the juggler not behaving himself that turn. And this defender I was talking about getting some value with it, maybe that was his only chance. Nope, this is going to be a lot better, he's going to get some terrific value from his defender. Uh, yeah. Card obviously the RDU we mentioned last set RDU cuts one of the defenders just because it sometimes doesn't do much. Right, and there talking is of two, one. <laughs> there it is. So um, I guess priority target is. Mm, I mean that's that's very difficult actually because the knife check. I mean you still have this Imgeng boss. The Imgeng boss is already damaged. So is the is the imp or is the knife check the more priority target? Um, how about making a new imp? I so trade the boss into the one two, make a new imp, buff that one up. Ah! Um, yeah, you could do the two, but I mean uh, about the attack, like which one uh, right. you kill. So uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. So the juggler is killing minions, and yep. the most that the Malkazar's imp is going to do is draw you a minion. So this is a guaranteed one minion swing a lot yep. of the time, yep. whereas the other way is only sometimes a one minion swing, I think. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the question is whether it's more important to de deny this one additional card, or whether it's more important to deny two knife juggles on average, I guess. and. Yeah, two juggles on average is, are probably very threatening, I agree. Okay. So, JJ in the spot here. I mean, Darkshire Consum and Dark Peddler into this one drop looks pretty appealing. He might consider maybe drawing first with a 3 1. And so maybe if he gets a Doomguard, he can then play it. Yeah, he also gets more information if he's thinking of doing this anyway. So, he picks a better Peddler pickup. Yep. Uh, he'll have more information to base his choice. That's right. But this 7 to council, man, I mean, you don't even want to have a Doomguard here, right? Because you cannot really address all these three taunt minions and so kill the councilman in a very, in a, any kind of good way. So, um... He's looking for an answer right now, see what he can get. Yeah, but you could. You um, Actually, you could. If you would have played the Doomguard, you could have traded one, away, uh, like, all three okay. taunt minions away. Um, so next up, the peddler. I, oh, but you want to buff your councilman. So this is where it gets messy. And if he's going to use the peddler, he needs to speed up. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And hey, this councilman. There's a soul fire oh. that will deal with it. And okay. And discard the defender and draw a different card. That seems reasonable as well, to be fair. Yeah, that was insane. That was really insane. 
And JJ's managed to turn around a board that looked completely hopeless into a situation that gives him a chance. Yeah, I absolutely agreed here. Um, but there are these three cards in Vegas right. and he can just play all of them. And that's huge. That's a very huge deal. Especially also buffing up the Imkin boss again and again and again. And uh, JJ, his ordering, which was, I think he was correct the way he played it, but it meant his councilman didn't get buffed, which means the councilman now won't kill this Imp Gang boss when it trades in with the abusive sergeant. Yes, that's also a very big thing. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see the defender of Argus coming down on the Imp Gang boss anyways. But maybe not. I mean, uh, having the Imgang boss at one is also not an issue. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, probably that's yeah, good. These two Imgang bosses, through the course of this game, just incrementally have done bits and pieces of damage that has led to this board state. Oh, uh, all yeah. All these, just these small 1-1s one have gained by trading into a 2-2 two -two and so on. And this is the main reason why Vegas is ahead right now. That's right. I mean, I don't know whether you kept count, but this Imgang boss probably already spawned three, four, four Ims. I don't know. Something like that. I'm going with three, but it could be four for sure. Probably this is the fourth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very good. Okay, so he did that. So defender of Argos, the Imkin boss, anyways. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure because you can probably assume that the tutu will trade into it anyway. So you might have also gone ahead and buffed something else. But yeah, I guess it's definitely a possibility. And JJ just not got many ways to spam back this board. I assume he's not playing anything like Forbidden Ritual, like we saw from Firebat, which yes. was his anti zoo tech. Knife Jack okay. into Forbidden Ritual. <laughs> That's about all we need, yeah. So JJ is still fighting the board. But yeah, it looks less and less appealing. The board of Vegas is just growing every turn because he can choose which beneficial trades he wants to do. He can choose whether he wants to go face or not. He can choose what to buff. So yeah, every snowball card of Vegas will have very, very good use here. Yeah, it's going to be a huge win, assuming the Vegas does pick this up. It's going to be a huge win. Obviously, this Zoom we talked about all week has been important. Yep. But JJ going with that Dragon Warrior with double Nazoth's first mate yep. for this eventuality. Uh, people have talked in other casts about how a lot of players didn't like the 50-50 nature of just playing Zoom mirrors, deciding it. That's well, right. JJ's bypassed that. He's got the 50-50 and a favorable matchup as well. Yeah, that's right. And I'm also looking forward to uh, seeing this in action because I guess this game is kind of probably lost. <laughs> uh, were you guys already onto the Dragon Warrior theme before the, the match with Stan Sifka or was it that that really helped swing? I know that was against Tempo Mage, but those, those 17 games, did they help you decide? Oh, okay, no, no. I, I mean, we, we are very convinced yeah. about the dra um, Dragon Warrior being very strong, or at least very suitable for this meta. Okay, so that's lethal. Yeah, he's just, just, um, I was just talk turning through this lethal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And um, so, no, it was rather the other way around that uh, Stan said, yeah, it's a pretty bad deck, and um, then we made some matches to confirm that it's not, so. Right. Yeah, and if you take, because Tempo Mage is one of the, the underrepresented um, decks at this tournament, I felt. I think a lot of people coming into it felt that Tempo Mage mm. was one of the decks to beat. I mean, we haven't seen it, so it's all drifted out of mind. Yep, but right. I, th I think that that matchup as well, if the Dragon Warrior was there to, to be, let's say, 50 50, so we don't have a fight uh, against the Tempo Mage, mm -hmm. uh, I think that that was another thing that that was planning for in this match tournament. It just it hasn't developed. Like, just no one, not many people have brought Tempo Mage. Yeah, that's right. And we can already see the hand right. of Super JJ, and it's just packed full of dynamite. It's like the first mate which will help so tremendously. The Fairy Warwick's also not the worst card against who I heard. And the Alex Trusted Champion also ready to wreak havoc once any kind of dragon arrives. It's and insane. with that War Axe and Nazos first mate, the dragon's going to almost certainly arrive in time. Uh, Vegas also um, struggling with his mulligan. I'm sure he'll keep this ink bank boss, even though it's a little tiny bit slow. He's got so many one drops, he should be able to curve into that. And that's obviously a problematic card against a lot of things that do three damage at one turn. Yeah, I definitely agree here. I mean, the Imkin boss just being able also to confirm some kind of board control once you uh, could break even at it or maybe even lose it. So definitely think that's a correct keep. See what he pulls from that keep. Imp and Soulfire, that's something he can do, but it's a bit tricky. Oh, that's going to just fix his, his worries somewhat. And now JJ is in a position where he's probably going to have to... If he'd drawn a dragon, I think we'd have seen him coin out the War Axe for sure. Yep. Now he's got to think about it really hard, but no, he knows the matchup. He just yeah. It. 
I think Warrex it is. Um, you just want to get rid of this Im. You also don't want to give Zu any kind of possibility to just seize the board and this is the way to go. You also see Vegas not having any kind of drop. If he wants to drop these two ones, they are aligning so badly into this fiery works, it's really bad. Um, but tap is not an option either, right? <laughs> right. Uh, in JJ's next turn, let's say he doesn't draw a dragon, he has to play the Alex Draza champion. Uh, mm -hmm. Are there... Is it a big downside to reveal the fact you haven't got a dragon in your hand? Does it make much difference or is it just, okay, they know, but what can they do about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it ah. uh, might be not the downside of showing that you don't have a dragon, but it's just so bad to deploy of it. Of course, right. I would have not even been surprised if you would have gone for some kind. I mean, if the imp would have been deployed for the weapon hit and just replacing the weapon with a first mate, because the Electros Champion being 3 3 charged for 2 mana is just so strong. Right. Um, I mean, we will see it in action now. I, I always used to call it like your third and fourth war axes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of its function in this matchup, especially. Yeah, that's right. They're just insane. But I would also not be surprised to see JJ just going face here. I mean, 3 damage against Zoo, it just adds up. And um, that's good because of two reasons. The one reason is that you have the 6 mana 9-9 nine nine Slayer, the Draconite Crusher who just grows to 9-9 nine nine right. if your opponent is at 15 life or below. And Zoo usually helps you with their hero power. Right. And the other thing is that you, if you raise them and if you just bring them down enough, they at some point of the game they just don't have the ability to life tap anymore. Which is, of course, in a, in a matchup where people are trading blows for the board. Obviously, if you can take away that ability for their extra cards, you've leveled the playing field so much. That's right. And okay, I think we see the Imp Gang boss. This tidies up all Vegas' early problems now. He has to untangle this web of discard mess. Mm -hmm. And he's untangled it really nicely. Next turn he is going to have, depending what he draws, the Imp, the Soulfire and the Golem. That's going to be really tidy for him. Yeah, the Imp, the Soulfire and the Golem, I mean, they are not the worst cards <laughs> in the zoo, especially in the combination. I mean, that is the combination of the discard, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, okay, Berserk, Trade, and probably no address. Bringing Vegus usually in the position where he cannot really attack the Frozen Berserk, but he also doesn't want to attack the 3-1 with the Imp gang usually. Um, so does he pick something he play? He can't play this without and do the other things we were talking about. He'd have liked something cheap, so he could have just sulfide away the frothing and guaranteed the silverware. Oh, he would probably try, I guess. Now he's going to have <laughs> to try. And gamble, be gamble, yeah. Pretty 50 -50. important. And this 50-50 is so super uber important, it's insane. Right. Because the Defender of Argos is also not that bad in the hand, on the other hand, the Silver Golem without additional discard is just pretty dead until you draw this additional discard. Yeah, and in the context of the match, JJ having lost the mirror already, this is his, his lifeline match. Yes. And if, if this Soulfire does produce a Silver Golem, JJ's going to be in real trouble. What's going to happen? And it's... The, oh, it's so strong. Come takes on. the Silverware Golem onto the board, and Vegus will be in a really strong position now. Yeah, he can trade. I mean, what he gives with the Silver Golem is at least one target, but the Imp is also already a target, so this was so important. So important, and obviously this is something that Dragon Warrior doesn't do very well: is come back from behind. It has some bits and pieces. It has plenty of weapon damage. Yep. Got the Corruptor, but the Zoo is also going to keep making this board more and more. Uh, That's right. Just keep out of range if it can. That's right. Both decks don't have really good comeback mechanism. Um, I mean, the Warrior has a little bit with a Ravaging Ghoul, so that would be a one possibility. And JJ, obviously deep into the tank here. Uh, all the things going through your mind here, so first of all, what do I kill? You presumably just kill the 3-3. Three, three. Do I want to waste my blood to Rico killing a, an Imp? No, he, he probably wants to definitely kill the Imp uh, because of the um, of the Doomguard coming in. Mm -hmm. So I would really not be surprised to see him hitting the uh, Imp with the uh, X and then probably just playing right. all the other stuff. The Fairy Dragon, he already has another Dragon in the hand. The Blood Twiker and the First Mate. Yeah. So here, first the Weapon Hit. Uh, and the only question is what to blood to Iker, but it's probably also this 3-3. Uh, three, three. Right. I really like it very much. And gets what he can of the board. Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, he mm -hmm. didn't lose board control yet. And uh, in comparison to the Zoo, uh, the Warrior really has very big cards, like the Blackwing Corruptor, to just deliver a big board blow. So b 5 mana being a 5-4 and delivering 3 damage is something which you, um, uh, in terms of power level, don't encounter in Zoo. Right. 
Uh, the thing I'm scared of from JJ's point of view here is that Vegas is going to do this same thing with the Imp Gang boss here that he did in the previous game. He can buff it up, start getting more and more Imps like he did before yes. without it dying and have it taunted so at some point it has to give even more Imps. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, I wouldn't be so surprised if he would send the 2-1 into the 3-2 either, but how, how does it work? So if he buffs both, he could send the Imkin boss into the 1-1 one, one mm -hmm. and send the 1-1 one, one into the 3-2 basically. Right. If he buffs it up as well. Oh no, well actually it's... And then just trade the golem into the 2-2 two, two and have a decent looking board. Okay. He's gonna go this way. Yeah, no, so he, he get, yeah, this doing what you, what you said. Yeah, 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 he's still doing what you said. And... Again, this Imgang boss is just such a nuisance to deal with, especially when it's taunted up and you have to just keep giving those Imps. Yes, yes, that's, that's really, I mean... Not even the Blackwing Corruptor. I mean, we talked about the potential of the Blackwing Corruptor. I mean, it is very strong, but not strong enough to seize, uh, to re-seize the board control immediately. So probably Blackwing Corruptor on the 2-3 and hooking the 4-1 Silverback Golem is what we will see now. Very awkward hand for JJ because there's, when you start getting 5s and 4s, you want it to be turn 9, not turn 5. So you get one of these down, then next turn, if you, you, you've just got to hope you pick up something you can play that's cheap, otherwise you're in yeah. real trouble. Like, you'd want your second Alex Strauss as a champion, I would think. Yes, that's right. I mean, Super Jeju still can come back. I mean, he has yeah. some things in his hand which are kind of okay. And the hook, I mean, of course, you lose a lot of life, but you regain a little bit of board control. But yeah, it's not looking very good for him, that's for sure. Just to re-emphasize, it is only 1-1, one, one. it will be 2-1. JJ will still have his Druid. The reason it sounds so bad is because Druid versus Zoo is a pretty poor matchup right yes. now. That's right. Oh, Vegas drew like the perfect card which he can play with the other two st uh, with the other two cards in his hand already. So definitely would, uh, not surprised if Darkshire comes him and die with Alpha in the middle, perfectly addressing this 5-4, uh, yep. and then possess Villager. Alternatively, he could also send the Imkin boss. That's up to him. And when you empty your hand as Zoo, you have so many options with your discards later, you start being able to really cheat with those discard mechanics and set them up how you want. In the early game, you have to take the 50 50s, the one in yeah. threes. But later on, when you get to this position, you've emptied everything down, then you can start just manipulating your deck as well. That's right. That's right. So he decides to push in the M King boss. That makes him a little bit more vulnerable to the ghoul. Um, but he also can uh, assume that Super Jeju didn't have the ghoul until this very moment. So he just hopes that Super Jeju doesn't top take it, which is very unlikely. And the other thing with the ghoul right now is it's going to be a six mana ghoul. And I think Vegu's probably worked that out. If yep. he does ghoul, that's all he's doing on the whole turn on turn six. Mm -hmm. And that's not that bad for you if you can just then respond again. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's a six mana ghoul, but I guess in this situation... Yeah, you, you take it. You, you, take, you go yeah. for it. <laughs> Definitely. And yeah, I don't want to diss the ghoul. It's just that it, it would just die and repopulate. It's true, it's true. But in this case, it really looks very bleak. I mean, probably Cochrane is coming down here, maybe also taking another 1-1, one, one, armoring up. But it's... Uh, yeah, the councilman will hit for big, big time and also all these small minions. Um, one trading with the Cochrane, of mm -hmm. course. So, yeah. Yeah, getting rid of this wolf, tra trading in one of the minions, at least it starts thinning the field so that if the ghoul does come off the top, there's a way of clearing more stuff up. You're now looking at your opponent having to have bad draws and life tapping badly, mm -hmm. and you join your ghoul. But this is how these guys get those extra one or two percent that makes such a difference in the Swiss, and especially, you know, over the course of a year's play, if you, yeah. you probably play a hundred really important matchups. If you win two extra ones because of that, that's just massive. Mm -hmm. um, maybe he could have tried for the Ezra Drake because of the evaluation that he needs to draw a ghoul and otherwise it will be over anyways. But yeah, I, I like this play here too. I mean, it's basically uh, just blocking a little bit and just hoping to draw something decent and hoping that the zoo doesn't, which he does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's insane. The Daksha Librarian without this card is just an insane Just card. a free card because it has to die. It's crazy. Knife Juggler as well, trading one of the 1-1s. Probably not the villager, right? Because I imagine you say the villager because the only way you lose this game is the ghoul, but he just wants to get that damage in now. Yeah, and, and it's uh, it also confirms two additional damage, one from the councilman and one from the knife juggler. So yeah, that's definitely also a very good line. Yeah, I feel that he had enough damage next turn anyway. Let's, does this set up lethal? No, he would have had enough damage if you count top decks anyway, so he could probably have protected his 1-1 one, one there, but... Yeah, maybe. I mean... But he's in, yeah, I mean, he's in this position anyway, so takes a 2-1 lead and has beaten
the Dragon Warrior and the Zoo with his Zoo, and now goes into the favoured Druid matchup. Vegus in a very, very strong position. Yeah, exactly. I also have to say, I mean, Vegus was also already on stream yesterday on the Swiss, at the Swiss stage, and um, I could also comment two Zoo games from him at that very moment, and he really, really played this Zoo well. And uh, what we see today is also awesome. I mean, really, really little misplays, if any, and really, really good gameplay. Very happy to see that. Yeah, uh, if you come through a nine rounds of Swiss in a lineup like this, I mean, anyone who didn't check the lineup, just go to the DreamHack page, just check out the lineup mm -hmm. for this event, the 200 confirmed players. You will have heard of 130 of them. Mm -hmm. you know, some of them you might not know who they are, what they look like, but you'll have heard of these guys' names around the circuit for the last year. And to come through that into the top eight, you don't do that by winning 30% shots nine times in a row. You've got to be at least close to those guys to come through that Swiss. Yeah, and Vegas definitely is. I mean, yeah. very good gameplay. What we see here, it's very awesome to be part of it. Um, Super JJ managing to draw Meyer Keeper, which is very important in this matchup, especially if you have access to coin and inner rate. So um, definitely wouldn't be surprised to see exactly this coming down here. And here it is. Zack, zack, zack. Gets yourself that extra mana and you can't keep up with Zoo on board with your minions. They're not good enough, they're not quick enough. Yes. So how you keep up with them is by cheating and making everything cheaper effectively by having more mana available. Yeah, basically also changing, saying yes, I'm second, but from now on I'm first. Right. Just over here. <laughs> Permanent coin or whatever you like to say, you just swapped over the, the coin roll. And also forcing the trade is not the worst, so not taking any kind of damage during the course of the action also very good. So what kind of card will he be looking for with this Raven Idol when it comes? Will he be looking for Ramp or just something to occupy the board? Well, both. Uh, you don't mind about both. I mean, you might mind about this, because those are probably the three worst cards you could have ever imagined. Yeah. But yeah, you would have taken Innovate, you would have taken Wildfire, and yeah, you would have also taken Roots or Wrath, for sure. So, Mark of Nature buys you some time later. Savagery can actually just kill a guy, yeah, an extra minion maybe, but it's kind of a short-term solution that doesn't really do much. Mm -hmm. And and the other mark of wild is just worse. If you if you mark of nature something, it's going to just have that extra health and kill more things. That's right. Yeah, that Raven Idol was really awkward, but maybe no. <laughs> yeah. Now this decision is really complicated for me because all three of these have very obvious different abilities that they're all handy against. So. Yes. Yeah. I'm really curious whether uh, Super JG will decide for the Starfire here because at the moment his hand is not mm. super filled and the power of the wild is also not doing that much against Zoo. The Moonfire might, so it's probably between Moonfire and the Starfire here. But I, yeah, I don't mind the Moonfire. I mean, probably you might get overrun and you probably draw expensive cards anyways. Yeah, Vegas not messing around, developing the Councilman behind the Taunt and he's going to start building that up. And that thing. We don't see as much as we used to, we have, until recently we hadn't seen it that much mm -hmm. uh, compared to when the set was released. But now this councilman can just overrun this game. But first there's a problem to deal with, you can't let Fandral live going into Nourish turn. That's right, yeah. Um, but I think the Fandral is kind of an easy handle, he can just handle sure. the Darkshire councilman once it achieves to reach 4 attack. So you could trade your 1-1 villager into it, then your uh, council man is already 2 attack and then... Yes. The and then there's all the other options he has as well with maybe picking up a soul fire here or power overwhelming. He hasn't, right. but he's got good things to choose from again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And... Uh, <laughs> to void, okay, we, we are now confirming three white walkers on the board. I was wondering whether it would have not been better to play the knife juggler and play the... Uh, nah, it's, it's probably not better. That's probably fine. Yeah, and this, this wall of Void Walkers just means that even if JJ gets down and has a Drake or something, how, or even a Giant, how does it get through this wall? It takes so long just to smash through these things one yep. at a time. That's right. I mean, may maybe the knife juggler would have been better than the double Void Walker. I mean, uh, what was the reason why he played the double Void Walker over the knife juggler? I mean, he got to buff the Counselor by one more, so it's a guaranteed damage later rather than maybe damage if he's killing the minion anyway, but yeah, I, no. I feel that the Juggler would have been better. Yeah. I mean, I guess the Councilman would have grown to uh, enough power to address the Fendral anyways, and he could have just deployed the White Walkers next turn, so... Yeah, that would have been maybe two or three more shots. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's, it's very close, it's very close. Um, so JJ now sitting on this Arkin and on this Saracen. Yeah, it 
doesn't really look good for him. Right, we've talked about getting value out of your defender. There's rather a lot of value here, making these taunts even more huge. And, and double taunted. <laughs> the world's taunt. Yeah, JJ actually there. Yeah, sorry. Uh, my, li my line is wrong. I'm Okay, so um, here uh, JJ also was hoping with the Savagery, he was so much hoping for top deck Feral Rage or for just a Raven Idol into something which just confirms a little bit of attack, just a Claws or something else, even from the second Raven Idol, but he just couldn't get it. I mean, these Raven Idols were just so much, so punishing, that's super insane. So Vega's thinking about the ways he can lose this, and the only way he can even try to lose this is something like possibly even exactly Blood Mage into Swipe. Mm -hmm. So he just taking his time where to position this defender that gives him the best way of surviving that yeah. and, and the turns after it because the blood, the blood mage into swipe alone is not enough mm -hmm. and yeah he's going to put this this is an awkward set of very differing minions that yes. JJ has to deal with all in different ways with three cards that's right yeah I also don't see I mean you also see that JJ doesn't have access to any of those cards yet yeah I mean it's, it's, we so. can see this with cast division it's not even relevant but oh. people at home may be wondering why Vegas was taking so long to make that decision. He's just working out what the most awkward setup of this stuff is. Exactly, yeah. We also see JJ's um, reaction to this wild scrolls absolutely devastated. He, we see that he just sees and realizes at this very moment that this yep. match just slipped away from his hands. Yeah, and Vegas is going to go into the top four mm -hmm. to play against Uni. So one of those two guys, again, they're both players who are around the scene. Yeah. One of them's going to go into the final. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be very interesting. It will be very interesting. I mean, top four is already a super achievement. Um, just being top four and also the, uh, having the option to go into the finals or even win the whole thing. Which is right. Insane. And I mean, the experience these guys gain from this as well. Again, they've been around, they've had the experience of everything but these stream games. And it's such a shame for JJ, who's been to so many top eights and top 16s this year. But it's also on the other side of that, it's so fantastic to see Vega who's going to get a shot. Some good exposure, going to get top four. Oh, he, corrupt. He streams a lot as well. So this oh, is going to boost all those figures. That's right. And he can really launch into his career from this point. That's right. I was just so, I mean, this corruption, man. He just got the corruption. Yeah, I'm not even end. looking at the game anymore. I'm just sort of waxing lyrical about Vegas, how it's going to help him because I've given this one up, I'm afraid. And JJ's given it up as well. And Vegas goes into the semi-final. He's going to be our second semi-finalist of the day. Well done to him and commiserations to JJ yet again in the top eight. Well, <laughs> Zoo is reigning supreme, right? It's raining zoos. And it seems that the Dragon Warrior didn't pull its weight against the zoo. Right, right? yeah. Even though Jade's hand was actually very good. He had the Pirate, he had the Alex Dress's Champion, he had the Fairy War Axe, all the tools right. that he needed to win that matchup right, were yeah. there in place. But something happened and uh, the, I, I think that the Imp Gang Boss was actually the most important card for, for Vegas there. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the, there was this and there were also kind of a little bit emptier turns for JJ. Mm -hmm. So this 3-6 Taunt Dragon really, really helps this matchup. And he just didn't have access to that and had kind of suboptimal turns, turn 3 and turn 4. And that also, in, in combination with his Imking boss deploy, just led to the loss of this game, yeah. But enough of that, we have our winner. Congrats, man. Congrats, You're in the you. semi-final. Yeah? So that was actually amazing. You, you are... I would say you are very good as zoo pilot. Do you have a lot of experience with this deck? Uh, yeah, I have a, a lot of experience, yeah. I've played it a lot on ladder. It was before the Shaman meta, but mm -hmm. uh, it's still there. I haven't okay. played uh, much too lately. I mainly play uh, Shaman on ladder, and, but I play uh, a lot of open caps, so I get some uh, Shaman ban experience al as well and, su and such. So. Okay, but so far this is your biggest achievement, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played in the summer prelims, but I, before it was, that was the biggest I've <laughs> okay, tell us biggest stage I played. Tell us something about yourself. You're Swedish, right? Yeah, I am Swedish, yeah. From, um, from which city? Skövde. Uh, it's called. It's uh, one hour... Uh, from Jön Shopping, where oh, that's there. so convenient. Yeah, I <laughs> right? just took the train here. It's really close. Yeah. Okay, uh, Lauren does that actually you're streaming, right? Yeah, I stream. Uh, stream that's, in that's Swedish. the moment you plug in your channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's uh, twitch.tv slash Vegas. That's my nickname. Okay. That was easy. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking about uh, actually switching over and doing some English uh, streaming now that uh, I get some uh, noticement from uh, maybe. This drink, That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the match. Guys, do you have any questions to our, to our winner? Yeah, I really liked how you played the zoo, so um, I was not very surprised to hear that you had already gathered a lot of experience playing this deck because you really played it very well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>
yeah, nothing to add. It was just really great to watch it and good luck in the top four. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, last question, maybe. Um, are you prepared already? Did you prepare already for the next match or were you just focusing on the game uh, as JJ? I was for sure just focusing on this match. So uh, what, what's your plan see. now? Uh, we'll see. I don't know. Well, <laughs> I, you I don't you will have the knowledge of the decks. So yeah. we'll I, uh, hopefully he doesn't have anything too surprising and mm -hmm. the strategy has been uh, good so far. Against Sansifke in the top 16, the match that was not stream, I had to change up my strategy because his lineup was so unusual. So I banned okay. his Rino Lock. He played uh, Stansifka and Pokrovac at the same lineup, so that was quite interesting. That did well. Uh, so maybe mm. there can be something different here as well if there's something surprising. We'll see. Okay. Anyway, I don't, I don't want to put you here on the on the trip too long because you need to prepare for your next match. So thank you very much. Congrats. You're in the top four, which is an amazing <laughs> achievement. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now we'll just jump to a short break and we'll have the next match in like two minutes. So don't go away, guys. This is Dreamhack Winter Grand.